Hey guys, welcome back. I'm super excited to be kicking off the summertime season and I'm gonna share with you guys today some really delicious but really simple recipes for your next cookout. Also a huge thank you to National Pork Board for sponsoring today's video. If you guys enjoy it, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing before you go. So one of our cookout essentials is definitely making fresh guacamole and sometimes less is more. I'm gonna show you guys my classic guacamole recipe. There's literally only six ingredients in this which includes cilantro, tomatoes, red onions, salt, and of course avocado and lots of lime juice. I do like to take a little bit of that sea salt and grind it up a little bit and this helps it really distribute in that avocado. Then I went ahead and added my avocado and my lime juice and we like our guacamole really chunky so I try not to over mix. So I'm just basically mashing it to get rid of the larger chunks and then I go ahead and add the rest of my ingredients. The red onion really gives it a nice crunch. I also love adding tomatoes because it gives it a beautiful color, lots of fresh cilantro. Then I go ahead and combine all those ingredients but I don't want my avocado to be completely smooth. So you guys will see I just mix it enough to combine everything and then I taste it and I typically like to add more lime juice. My husband loves his guacamole, super limey. And this is gonna go really good on the tacos that we're making but it's also a really good snack to have as everything is being prepared. So for the main dish, we're gonna be making pineapple chipotle pork tacos. And these are so good, you guys. I love using pork for these tacos because it just goes so well with all of the flavors that we're using and pork does a really good job of absorbing lots of different flavor profiles. So I'm going to show you guys the marinade that I'm making today. It's so easy. We are going to be using fresh pineapples. If you can't find fresh pineapples, then I would recommend using pineapple juice or even canned pineapples. So I just go ahead and peel it and cut it into slices and then I remove the core. We're also gonna need chipotle peppers, ancho chili paste, oregano, sea salt, apple cider vinegar. Of course, our pineapples, garlic, and onion. And we're gonna put all of those ingredients in a blender. So I'm using pork loin chops for this recipe. Um, you can definitely feel free to use a different cut of pork if you want. I like these in particular because they're super tender and they're also really easy to use in smaller portions. So I can marinate a lot at a time and then only use what I need for the day and then put the rest in the freezer and save it for later. Also, if you guys did not know, pork is also an excellent source of lots of nutrients that our body needs. And it goes really well with just a side of veggies or salad if you wanted to make like a quick little meal in the middle of the day. And it's also a really good option if you're somebody that looks for a lean protein. So I'm gonna go ahead and cover it with my marinade. Make sure that it is all completely coated. I cover that and stick it in the fridge. And you can let this marinate for at least one to two hours, but I highly recommend doing it overnight if you can. The longer this marinates, the yummier it's gonna be. While that's marinating, I'm gonna go ahead and make the mango pineapple salsa that's gonna go on top of our tacos. It is so yummy. And then I'm also adding tomatoes, onions, and jalapenos. And I'm gonna go ahead and mix all of that in the bowl along with some salt and lime juice. Um, definitely feel free to use fresh jalapenos. I just happen to have pickled jalapenos on hand. Either one is fine. And then I'm also going to be adding some cilantro to it. So I go ahead and set that aside, put it in the fridge so it can chill, and now we can start cooking our pork chops. It literally took like 10 minutes to cook this. It cooks so fast, and it's so incredibly juicy when it comes off the grill. I think there's a misconception that pork has to be cooked so much to the point where the juices run clear, but you actually only need to cook it until the internal temperature reaches 145 degrees Fahrenheit. So I would recommend getting a thermometer if you don't have one. This is just gonna make your life so much easier. After you remove it from the grill, you want to make sure to let the meat rest for at least three minutes. This gives me just enough time to throw the tortillas on the grill. We're using corn tortillas, but if you guys have an alternative, definitely feel free to use that if you want to use something a little bit healthier. And you guys can see when I cut into it just how juicy it is. And also you'll notice that the inside is a light blush color and this is exactly what you're looking for. So I go ahead and continue cutting it into smaller pieces so that I can go ahead and put them in our tacos and then I top it with the mango and pineapple salsa that we made and then I just garnish it with a little bit of cilantro. These tacos are seriously so good, you guys. I really hope you give them a try. I highly recommend incorporating pork into your summer grilling. If you guys wanna learn more, you can go to pork.org slash cooking and there's gonna be a link down below for you guys along with the exact measurements and ingredients to all the recipes that I talk about. The next thing we're making is elote. This is one of my favorite summertime recipes. 
we're literally just gonna take our corn, we're not gonna take it out of the husk and put it on the grill and let that grill for about 15 to 20 minutes. And meanwhile, we're gonna make a mayo lime sauce. Um, you basically just wanna mix mayonnaise with some lime juice, mix it until you get this kind of consistency. And for cheese, we're gonna be using cotija cheese. So after our corn is done, our corn got a little bit well done this time. We typically like parts of it to be charred, um, but definitely cook the corn to your preference. So I go ahead and remove all the husk and then I make sure to completely coat it with that mayo lime dressing. Um, by the way, if you want it to be a little bit healthier, you can actually combine Greek yogurt and lime juice and that tastes really yummy too. Then I'm gonna coat it with that cotija cheese. I'm also adding some of the ancho chili powder and some cilantro on top. And that is literally all you need, you guys. This is just a classic recipe that tastes delicious. I even eat it when it's not summertime. <laughs> The last thing we're making is s'mores in a skillet. This is great if you don't have any type of open fire where you can actually roast the marshmallows and it's so easy. You basically are going to deconstruct your s'mores. You're gonna start by layering your chocolates on the bottom of the skillet. I used um, milk chocolate on half and then peanut butter cups on the other half. And then we're just gonna top it with our marshmallows. I did use jumbo in this video, but I definitely recommend using the normal size. The jumbos do kind of tend to expand and they can spill and make a huge mess. Or you can get the jumbo size and cut them in half, which is probably what I should have done. And we're just gonna take a skillet, put it on the grill, and we're gonna leave it in there until the marshmallows start to turn golden brown, but you definitely wanna check on it. Otherwise your chocolate can actually burn and your marshmallows can burn too. This is what you're looking for, it's just that golden top and then you just serve that with graham crackers and it's absolutely delicious. It is so fun to eat too because you don't have to sit there and like wait for your marshmallow to roast and sometimes it catches on fire and that marshmallow fluff is just so good. So I really hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Again, huge thank you to National Pork Board for sponsoring today's video and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.